Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having an unbelievable uh, week at this point. We're almost at the end. I hope that you were able to get some things accomplished. Uh, hope that you were able to make progress. There's so many challenges going on right now that it can be at times overwhelming if you don't know how to process it, if you don't know how to engage it. I just want to, what's up fam? Uh, I just want to encourage you first and foremost to continue to be persistent uh, people ask me often and for years uh, what's the secret to some of the things that I've been able to accomplish whatever they perceived as uh, representing success in my life whether it be the books I've published whether it be my academic career whether it be in business or sports or whatever and some people automatically say because they see the credentials well it's because you know so much no i know so much because i'm persistent i know so much because i never perceive that i know it all i i know what i know because i am consistently hammering and, and beating on uh my yearning and desire to know uh it is it is a knowing at a level that comes with a consistent commitment Con consistent commitment to achieve a certain level and then when I get to that level there's the next level it's always next level living for me but at the core of whatever I've accomplished in this life uh, it is the persistence to go the distance it is what I would define in one word relentless it is saying I will not quit I will not give up I will not turn back anyone who has ever uh, attended an event where I've spoken knows that one of my most common sayings is no surrender, no retreat. Matter of fact, if I revisit places that I've spoken before, I'll hear that the moment my name is announced. People are talking about no surrender, no retreat. Why? Because that's the impression I left upon them when they heard me speak previously, is that that is my belief. It, I mean, there are going to be times that you won't know the answer. There will be times you won't have the immediate solution to the problem. There will be times that you must trust that staying the course and pushing through it is the way that you're going to come out. And that comes from being relent relentless. There's a simple saying I've said uh, constantly. Once I set my mind to do something, there are only two outcomes. I will achieve it or I will die trying. No other options. It's simply how you must approach life. Life is going to test your commitment to the things you say you want. And if you balk at the first challenge or you balk at the first feeling of discomfort, if you balk at, 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 at opposition and delay and disappointment, you will constantly find yourself back at square one, not having accomplished the things that you've set your mind on to do. And that is what you don't want to happen. And it comes not by how much you know, not who you know, not any of the other uh, existential uh, 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 resources, but it will come solely based on what's on the inside, the willingness to per persist. It's simple. It, I didn't say it was easy. I said it was simple. You're going to have to be committed. It's going to be tough at times, but you got to be committed. Well, what I want to talk to you about today real briefly is in order to be persistent and keep going and not stop you got to start uh in my observation in, in 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 my area of expertise where i do my work uh one of the most common uh influences on whether or not a person is successful is whether or not they get started far too many people are looking for the perfect opportunity far too many people are waiting on the perfect timing Far too many people are operating from a fear of failure. 
And there are so many other things that lead to procrastination. This sitting still while everything is moving and expecting to keep up. I am under the belief that sometimes you've got to make a decision, good or bad, wrong or right, in order to move. But see, when you move, you start to create a force known as momentum. Momentum cannot be created from a static position. You have to be moving. Now, once you start moving, if there needs to be an adjustment, you make the adjustment, but you have to move. I can tell you something else. There is a force in life that's associated with the dynamic of faith. However you want to view it, however you want to talk about it, but the dynamic of faith, uh, 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 which is the force of something that comes from believing something so much that you act on it. See, believing something is in faith. Believing something so emphatically that you take action based on the belief is faith. And in, 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 when you take this action, you don't have the answers. When you take the actions, you have no guarantees. You take the actions solely based off of this belief that you may not even be able to explain, but this belief inside of you is so emphatically strong that you move on it. Without being able to dictate or predict, but just knowing somewhere inside of here that it's going to happen. Now, when you move on that, this is where extraordinary and phenomenal things happen. It's not until you commit that the doors of provision open up. When you're acting on faith, you can't wait until you see it because then it is no longer faith. Now you're acting on reason and logic, which you can still move through the world and operate and get some things done. But some of the exceptional and extraordinary and phenomenal things that you want to do in your life that you feel deep down inside is important to you only comes when you act before you see. You've got to take a step knowing that when I take this step, the doors of provision open up. All kind of things happen. I had it happen to me yesterday. Just once in a, I don't know how many times that I've sit up and said, okay, it's time for me to do something different. It's time, to, to, time for me to take this to the next level. I pick up a phone call, call someone I've known for a while, say it's time for us to meet. We need to do some things. We met, we had the conversation. While having the conversation, the answer to the next step walked up and sat down next to me. But it would have never happened if I wouldn't have moved on something that I didn't have a clear idea of where it would go. But just believing that this was the next move. I took action. Precise action. You are stuck in a state of procrastination and inactivity that will never produce the desires you have. You can have the desires all you want to. There's more to this the, 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 this. Uh, quantum physical idea of producing something than simple, simple, simple desires, simple self-talk, simple, simple positive thinking that requires a unique parallel movement of oneself in the direction that you desire to head in without clearly understanding the totality uh, and the uh, intricacies of what will take place afterward. You've got to be willing to move and then willing to trust, and then be willing to adjust. It is a process of success. No one has all the answers all, at, at, at one time. And when you think you have all the answers at one time, you find out that you're still making adjustments because what you thought you had calculated turned out not to be the right calculations because there are things in constant movement in this universe that are shifting while you're making your, con your calculations. So what are you going to have to operate on? You're going to have to operate on current knowledge, but an ability to be able to move and make adjustments. Matter of fact, it was said at the, at, at the end of the last century, moving into the new millennium, that uh, the definition of literacy and illiterate was shifting. It would, in, 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 the two, in, in, in this uh, current millennium, millennium, literacy would not be the ability, would not be so much focused on the ability to read, write, and understand, but the ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn 
and in rapid succession because now we're in a world where things are rapidly changing. And if you cannot unlearn what was working last year to learn what will work this year, you're going to find yourself increasingly falling back. So what do you do? You've got to be willing to make moves. You got to be certain in your movement and be willing to make changes when what you were certain of does not come to fruition. It's just a part of the thing. It's not being right all the time. If it required me being right all the time, man, I'd have been out the box a long time ago. If it required me being perfect, I would have been out of the box a long time ago. If it required me always having the higher road, I would have been out. But what it requires is an ability to accept when you're wrong, make the necessary adjustments, learn from those who have the ability to teach you, make yourself teachable, make yourself open to ideas, get outside of the box, think laterally, move laterally, move with an intense anticipation of exceptional things happening. A lot of you expect bad things. You expect it so much that you live out a level of anxiety that produces the negative outcomes that you fear. Take action, move, create momentum. You're not gonna make the move every time. You're not gonna make the right move every time. Stop trying to gauge it because you will sit there waiting on a perfect opportunity that will never show up. I believe it was George Bernard Shaw that said that those who get on in this world are those who wake up in the morning and go out and find the opportunities that they need to accomplish their desires. And if the opportunity does not exist, they create it. That is how you get on. You don't get on by sitting there thinking that everybody's gonna, somebody's going to walk up out the clear blue sky and look at you and see, oh my God, that's the potential for X, Y, Z and open up a door for you. That's not how it's going to happen. Someone's going to come along because you made a move. Opportunity is going to present itself because you made a move. With that being said, I have created, uh, and this is going to be the second go around, uh, I have created a real short and intensive master class of what I do to teach my clients, my one-on-one -on -one individual clients, how to overcome procrastination. And I am doing it in a master class. And this master class is set up for anyone who really is truly to, committed to doing so. You can afford it. Um, um, $100. You can afford it if you really truly commit it. Um, you know, when you look at the people who come to me, they're paying so much more than that for that one-on-one -on -one encounter and they're getting so much more out of it. But this is a chance to get started. It's the step. Take the step. Take the step. And even if you don't get in this master class, because I don't want you to think, oh, he just only, no, if you don't get this, you need to find someone who can facilitate you taking a step because you're stuck. And you have literally built a habit of procrastination. And if you don't break the habit, you'll, you'll get some behavioral things. You'll do it for a while, but you're going to go back and revert back to how you identify. Until you break that particular mold of how you see yourself, your self-concept, yourself, until you decide that you're going to do something differently and it's attached to how you see yourself, you're never going to make any consistent change. So... Uh, whether you work with me or someone else, or whether, I mean, and it doesn't have to be somebody necessarily you got to go out and sign up with, but I've learned that when you invest in yourself, you uh, tend to get a better return when you put some skin in the game. And it's not just seeking someone to pass by and drop you off something. On, on, you know, and that happens. I, I, I talk to people all the time in passing, and I share with them. Uh, but I tell you what, but when you intentionally go out and get it for yourself with a purpose of gr growing, it's a whole different experience and it produces an entirely different result. So the link to enroll is going to be in the description box of the video, whether you're watching it on Facebook, YouTube, Patreon, uh, it's going to be there. What I want you to do is decide to make your first step. That's the first thing you need to do in breaking the proclivity to procrastinate.
there's a science to overcoming procrastination. I'm going to introduce that to you uh, scientifically showing you what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how you overcome it. And then give you the practices and the mechanisms you can use to do so. And on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out, get out of here. I got so much more I need to do. But what I want to do right now is to uh, encourage you with something I always say, and that is I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. Uh, and I'm encouraging you to do the same thing. Live every second of your life with purpose in mind, on full, giving life everything you have so that when you leave this place, there are no regrets. You leave nothing behind. You die on E, meaning you've accomplished everything you could have possibly accomplished in the time you had on this earth. That's my challenge to you. On this note, I'm gonna get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable weekend. Dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group. I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Jay, people talk Real about talk, it, I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements.